next on All Access. Three, Malcolm, go! Wilson, quick throw. And it's good. Intercepted. Intercepted by Malcolm Butler. Butler has it at the one. Malcolm Butler stepping in front of the throw. Joining me now is Patriots special teams captain Matthew Sater. And do I even need to say welcome back? Was there ever a doubt for you? Uh, it wasn't a tough decision. <laughs> I, uh, I knew that I still wanted to play. This is the primary suite that we work out of here at Lucas Oil Stadium for the four days of workouts, Thursday to Sunday. We watch the players run through the 40s, uh, jumps. There's roughly, call it 10 to 15 uh, of us scouts here. The team building part of the year is in full force with the excitement building towards the 2022 NFL Draft. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by GEICO. I'm Steve Burton. Who's coming? Who's going? There's been a ton of activity in less than two weeks. Dan Rhodes joins us now with a status report of where the Patriots stand today. Obviously, it's a winning tradition, so I'm very excited. When you walked in, you realized why this place is so special. If 2021 was the high price, high profile outlier offseason, 2022 has been more of the methodical grinding approach of previous years. From Devin McCourty to Matthew Slater, New England has emphasized the Patriot way in bringing back many of their own, veterans that are invaluable both on and off the field. Matt, Devin, guys like that, they played such a high level for a, such a long time and they represent everything about the Patriots so it's, it's great to have their voices and their presence. James White is back too after suffering a season ending hip injury in week three an injury that involved a long road to recovery for the three time Super Bowl champion. Being kind of confined to a bed for the first few months and you know, not really being able to move around and do things for myself and I'm just feeling I'm in a good spot right now and I'm we're just going to keep progressing and take it one day at a time. The Patriots have also welcomed back Trent Brown, Jawan Bentley, Brian Hoyer, and Nick Folk. There have been departures. Among them, J.C. Jackson, Shaq Mason, Ted Karras, Brandon Bolden, and Gunnar Osheski. The Pats have made additions, such as cornerback Terrence Mitchell, linebacker Mack Wilson, and wide receiver running back returner Ty Montgomery. And finally, late in the week, the Pats brought back a familiar face. He has Wilson, quick throw. And it's good. Intercepted. Intercepted by Malcolm Butler. Super Bowl 49 hero, Malcolm Butler. Of course, the Patriots still have plenty of time to make some more free agent acquisitions, perhaps a trade or two as well. And then there's the NFL Draft, April 28th to the 30th in Las Vegas. Steve? Looking forward to that. All right, Danny, thank you very much. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Coming up on All Access, we get an inside look at the Patriots scouting department at the Combine. And ask them, you know, basic general conversation starters just to get them comfortable. A conversation with Captain Matthew Slater. We want to see this culture and tradition continue well beyond us. It's, it's much bigger than us. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, official bank of the New England Patriots, by Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off, and by Pepsi. That's what I like. Pepsi, official soft drink of the New England Patriots. I'm Lauren Spencer with your latest Patriots Social Media Minute. Free agency is well underway and no one is working harder than Matthew Judon. He's taken on a self-appointed recruiting role this month using Twitter to work his magic. In other free agency news, Devin McCourty officially announced a return to New England for his 13th NFL season and sources London and Braden were on it first. Yeah. 
And finally, this dad and daughter duo took Instagram by storm when they removed her loose tooth in the most Patriots way possible. They tied her tooth to a Patriots football, her field goal was good, and the tooth fairy was due for a visit. That's all for our latest Social Media Minute. I'm Lauren Spencer. In the hands and arms of Matthew Slater. There's a first block. Matthew Slater with the recovery and the run back for the score. Welcome back to Patriots All Access, everyone. Joining me now is Patriots Special Teams Captain Matthew Slater. And do I even need to say welcome back? Was there ever a doubt for you? Well, you know, it was, uh, it was certainly a, a time of reflection and, uh, you know, a time to, to really think about my future. And I'm really thankful that everything worked out the way that it did, that uh, Coach wanted me back. And then I, I still feel healthy and uh, still have the hunger to play this game. So I'm excited about being back. Uh, I really am. Did you go back and forth on this? Uh, it wasn't a tough decision. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. I, uh, you know, I had a good conversation with Coach yeah. about where he saw me and uh, what this season would look like and, and, and what he thought my role would be with the team. And uh, thankfully, that conversation went well, and, and that really helped me make my decision. I, I knew that I still wanted to play. Mm -hmm. um, I had convinced my wife that, it was a good thing for our family, and no, but we, we felt that way together, and um, we're excited about the opportunity. You see players, especially in these times, 2022, switching teams all the time, back and forth, back and forth. How important is it you for you to stay in one uniform? Well, it, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I'm very thankful that I've had the opportunity to be in one uniform for the entirety of my career. It's not something I thought I'd be able to do, especially in my position mm -hmm. as a special teams player. Uh, we tend to bounce around a lot. Uh, but it, it's really extra special for me because my dad did it. Um, mm. He spent 20 years in one uniform. Wow. And, and that was one of my big audacious goals was, hey, maybe I can do it like my dad did, however long my career would last. Um, wow. And it, it's pretty cool that I've been able to do that. No question about that. That is extra special. Yeah, it is. All right. So... We all know you played a long time, and it's rare for players to play a long time. But now that you and Devin McCourty are getting up there, you're not going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. How do you pass down the leadership to the next Matthew Slater and Devin McCourty? Yeah, absolutely. How does that get passed down? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think we need to be very intentional mm -hmm. with pouring into the younger guys. Um, the experience that we have, the lessons that we've learned, I think it's our job to communicate that to the younger guys, to encourage them to find their voice, uh, to lead in their own way. Don't try to be me, don't try to be Tom, don't try to be Devin. Uh, just be yourselves and lead in your own way and take ownership of what you're doing here. I think every player that's here and put in, putting in sweat equity every day should wanna take ownership of what's going on here. So, you know, I think it's our responsibility to identify those young guys, maybe encourage some guys that don't see themselves as leaders uh, to really take ownership, step up and lead. Um, because I think it's important for myself, and I think I speak for Devin when I say this also, uh, we want to see this culture and tradition continue well beyond us. It's, it's much bigger than us. It's, it's much bigger than one or two or three guys. Uh, it's really a culture that um, is bigger than mm -hmm. than any one piece. So uh, it's my prayer that that I can can do that uh, to some capacity over the, the remaining of my career, the remainder of my career, and, and see where it goes. All right, Matthew. Thank you very much, Matthew Slater. I guess we'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Welcome back to All Access, presented by Geico. Last month, the NFL took center stage in Indianapolis with a league conducted its annual combine. Our cameras got a behind-the-scenes look at the Patriots contingent while in the Circle City. Oh. 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 Luke 
Lucas Oil Stadium is the Patriots' home away from home during the combine. New England will have two working suites during this period. This is the primary suite that we work out of here at Lucas Oil Stadium for the four days of workouts, Thursday to Sunday, where we watch the players run through the 40s, uh, jumps. There's roughly, call it 10 to 15 uh, of us scouts here. But it's in the interview suite where some of the most meaningful information can be gathered. This is one of the most important pieces. So they come in, we greet them. Um, we kind of start off an initial conversation, ask them, you know, basic general conversation starters. So we basically have 20 minutes there on the clock and then it kind of counts us down. <laughs> We have a bullhorn, it's kind of hard to hear because the door's closed and we're kind of, you know, we're locked in on the guy. So there is a bullhorn, but it's pretty distant. You know, we get to know these kids and kind of see if their personality matches, um, you know, the player that we see on the field. And I think too, these are really long days and we're trying to, the transition in our program is gonna be long days. There's a mental stamina element to this. This is far nicer than, you know, they did in the past, so. And she would know. Nancy Meyer says she's been involved in at least 30 combines. Four years ago, we introduced you to what the interview room looked like then. Well, this is the New England Patriots room. They just take a hotel room and flip it to be an interview room. So um, they'd take out some of the furnishings in there. You'd have the beds removed. But the headboard to the bed was still, you know, drilled onto the wall. Our room is kind of limited. Yeah, you have real catering here. <laughs> you, you can have hot foods and, you know, you can really make it a room that you can come and spend part of the day, even if you're not interviewing players. It's a good meeting space for these guys to talk about what has been going on and what they've seen on the field. And we really didn't have that prior to that. So I think it makes for a good environment for our scouting staff. The dessert gets hit a lot, definitely. <laughs> we, we touch those brownies, those cookies. Oatmeal raisins my go-to. <laughs> yeah, I need to, that's, that's tough. That's a tough part of the road. We gotta, we gotta find ways to, to stay fit. So once I get back home, it's definitely, the diet starts on Monday. What I like most about the combine is St. Elmo's Steakhouse. No, but seriously, I think, I think the amount of information that you can acquire um, in a short amount of time. You get all the medical, you get an opportunity to meet with and interview guys. For more on the Patriots Scouting Department, we invite you to watch the full episode of Do Your Job, presented by Bose, on Patriots.com and all of our social media channels. This fall on Patriots All Access. It is safe to go back home again. We travel to Portland with wide receiver Kendrick Bourne, who received a hero's welcome in his old high school. <laughs> Kendrick Bourne, professional football player, Milwaukee grad. Hello, How you welcome doing? back. Oh, we're, 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 that's what, that's what gonna, real money is. Why is nobody in class, bro? What grade you in? I'm a uh, junior. Oh, that's what's up. What grade you in? I'm a senior. Oh, you can't do that. Big senior. <laughs> My size already. Uh, it's just so surreal, man. I'm definitely thankful. I didn't think I was going to get much reaction, but it's pretty crazy, though. So success, for sure. <laughs> Welcome back to Patriots All Access, everyone, in our Bob's Discount Furniture Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Prill. Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Steve. Let me start by asking you this. With the way the season ended last year and the way things are going this year in the offseason, how much concern is there for this Patriots football team? Yeah, I, I think if you listen to some of the people that Mike and I, you know, generally <laughs> interact with, you know, are the people that are commenting, there's a lot of concern. And, and it's been a kind of a slow start to the free agency period. I think we all expected that after the spree last year, Mike. 
But I think people are a, a little bit concerned because I, I think a lot of people wanted to get a little bit younger, maybe a little bit more athletic on the roster. And so far, uh, there really hasn't been a whole lot done in that regard. Yeah, and I think that's fair, you know, to have some concern because we saw the way the season ended. I mean, they couldn't force the Bills to punt the last two times they played them. And what have they done to improve themselves? Mm -hmm. Not that much. I think we, we want to look deeper. What are they trying to do here? And I think getting more out of the pieces that are already in place mm -hmm. is sort of part of the thinking here for the Patriots, whether that actually happens or it's a sound strategy. I think that's what we're witnessing unfolding with the way they're approaching this. Is that concern compounded with what the other teams are doing around the league, especially within the division? Oh, Steve, I don't think there's any question about it. I think people are looking around and they're seeing the talent uh, being acquired all over the conference. And it's, it's not just teams, you know, sort of changing guys, but the amount of talent coming from the NFC into the AFC, Mike, you know, and, and you know, I, I would even add Deshaun Watson, who's a guy that a lot of people thought was probably going to go the other way, AFC to NFC. He stayed in the AFC. So not only the Patriots haven't done a whole lot on paper, again, it's very early, but on paper, haven't done a whole lot to improve. Those around them have done a lot on paper and I, to get better. And, Paul, I look at it this way. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. And mm -hmm. so relating this to the Patriots, 2020. Like, when, yep. with Cam, like, they, they could only go so far. They have Mac. I, I think they have a chance. But relating that to the AFC, like, you got Russell Wilson coming to Denver. That immediately upgrades them. You got Matt Ryan going right. to the Colts. Immediate upgrade. You mentioned Deshaun Watson to the Browns. Upgrade over Baker, like, Absolutely. that much more. So the quarterback play around the AFC to me is sort of highlights what Paul is talking about. Well, talk about the players that have left. Shaq Mason, Ted Karras, J.C. Jackson. Have more players left Oh, for sure. That yeah. have come in. Yeah. Talking about talent wise. Yeah, you know, what the Patriots have done, and I agree with Mike's point, I think it's a good one about them sort of expecting some of the free agents they signed last year to maybe make a year two jump, like we would talk about with, with a younger player, a rookie. Um, and I think that's what they're banking on. But in terms of th those are three guys, <clears throat> you know, especially Mason and Jackson are two guys last year that a lot of these, you know, analytical sites will tell you they're the best two Patriots uh, performers last year. And it's really just. Ty Montgomery, Terrence Mitchell, and really a lot of question marks, that's all they've brought back. So they've lost more talent. Again, these games don't get played for a while. Mm -hmm. Andre, we're all talking about paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where do they go from here, right? So I think the draft becomes that much Huge. more critical for them. Like last year's draft, Excellent. Mac Jones, Christian Barmore, Ramondre Stevenson, maybe Ronnie Perkins shows something. Mm -hmm. Maybe Joshua Bledsoe, the safety in the sixth round, didn't, you know, maybe he shows something. Like that looks good. But some of the drafts before that, right, like with, that you should be seeing the fruits of your labor now, didn't really work out that well for the Patriots. So they need another good draft this year. I think that's a key part when we talk about where they go from here. And just to build off what I was saying, like Jonu Smith, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of excitement about him right. at this time last year. There was a reason why. So you got to look at why didn't that happen last year? And what can we do this year to make it happen? Like all hope is not lost with players like Jonu Smith. Nelson Aguilar. I would add Matthew Judon. Like a little bit right. of a fade there right. down the stretch. So getting more out of that group could help them. Well put, guys. Well put. That'll do it for this edition of Patriots All Access for Mike Lee and Paul Perillo. We will see you the eve of the draft coming up in April. So long, everybody.